What you're witnessing is the moon in its orbit around the Earth. It's going to be coming more than a thousand miles an hour. Is it over already? Where is it? Did we miss it? The size of the sunspot is about the size of Earth. This is humbling, yet enlightening. Here it comes. And this is going to happen fast. The total solar eclipse. Hey, YouTuberverse, Neil deGrasse Tyson here. We are en route to Vermont to view the April 8th total solar eclipse. We were scheduled to go to Dallas, and then I was looking at the trend of cloud cover, and it was looking worse and worse by the day, and up in New England, it was looking better and better, and so we pivoted. So, we'll check in a little later and give you progress on our journey to the great North American eclipse. I'm now initializing the telescope. It's finding and confirming where it is on Earth using GPS coordinates. Once it knows that, it'll know what time it is, where it is on Earth. And as long as it knows those two things, it will know where every interesting object is in the night sky. Back in my day, we had to know that ourselves. <laughs> uh, so that's uh, sunset over there. So that's the western skies. So that's west, east, this will be north and then south. You never have to tell an astronomer what directions things are, because we just know. <laughs> Awaiting uh, later after dinner when people will join me here for a star party, and I will be using my trusty laser. There's right here. Want to see it on the snow? Here to check it out. There's my laser. We'll see you in a bit. It now knows where we are very precisely in longitude and latitude on Earth and what time it is. And you need those two bits of information to precisely identify everything in the night sky and where it is and to track it. So it will also sequence the objects for your viewing pleasure. Whatever's directly overhead, it'll put first and then set. you can sequence it that way. There are other ways to sequence it, but that one makes most sense. M51 is a most excellent galaxy, and it's, it's very grand design spiral. And there's another galaxy off the end of one of its spiral arms. I'm gonna hit it, all I have to do is tap, and then I say, observe. And now, here it is. They start giving factoids. If you could travel at the speed of light, you would go around the Earth more than seven times in one second. Yet it would take you 87,000 years to cross the Whirlpool Galaxy. In the movie Contact, the opening sequence is a galactic journey beginning with Earth, the Sun, Moon, Mars, the asteroid belt, Jupiter, some of its moons, Saturn, Neptune, the Oort Cloud, Alpha Centauri, the Pillars of Creation, the Eagle Nebula, Al Galaxy, and ending with a journey through the galaxies. So these are factoids. So while it's acquiring the target, you are entertained by many pop culture references to that object uh, in our world. So here it is. Come here, check it out. Come here. Faster. <laughs> Way too slow. Okay. So, that is the galaxy, which is not very interesting, but it, it's recommending a 30-minute exposure. So now it's up to a minute. Let's see what one minute of exposure did to it. Okay. So you see it's slowly coming in. Okay. So it wants 30 minutes exposure. We've only been doing it now for 70 seconds. Looks like it's clear skies, a little, a little high cirrus, but nothing the sun can't punch through and still enable us to enjoy the majesty of this bucket list item called a total solar eclipse. Come on in.
chuck it out of my telescope. <laughs> All right. Okay. So this is the eyepiece for your phone. So that's the sun. Yep. That's the sunspot that we remember. Oh, yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> so this is the width of the path of totality. So this would be 60 miles. And, okay. 40 feet. That can't be right. Let me get out my trusty NASA Eclipse glasses. There you go. Oh yeah. Anybody else want one? I would. Thank you. Oh, hey Chuck. Hey man. Hey. So. Okay, now you can't look at the sun any other way. Right. Except through these protective glasses. Yes, and you know, during an eclipse, you know what they say. What? Never look directly at Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's down over here on the bottom right. Do you see that? Got a little nip. Yep, a little I see nip it. To the edge. Okay. Very tiny nip. That's first contact. Yay. Give it up for the universe. Yay. What you're witnessing is the moon in its orbit around the Earth, crossing between us, precisely between us and the sun. So you're watching the moon's orbit. And the moon goes about 2,000 miles an hour. Plus, I calculated that. I can be more precise, but it's about. 2,000 miles an hour in orbit around Earth. And so this is happening at a stately pace because it's of great distance and these objects are large. You'll only start getting eerie when the sun is half covered, three quarters covered, and I'll point out other things for you to notice when that happens. Okay, so what's going on? Is it over already? Where is it? Did we miss it? Oh, no. Wait, Where guys, is it? guys, yeah. the sun what? is over here. What? Oh, <laughs> man. That's awesome, isn't it? <laughs> so in this modern age telescope, there are no eyepieces. It's communicating directly with your tablet or with your smartphone. And so right now we see an active image of the sun being eclipsed. And you can notice the nibble taken away from the star, the sun, just as you saw with your unaided eyes. But in addition, because it's a telescope, you see extra detail. So there's a big sunspot patch right there. And that's an area of the sun that's slightly cooler. So in contrast with the rest of the sun, it looks dark. But you can take these sunspots, pluck, you can't do this, but if, if you could, pluck them off the sun, put them in the sky, and they would glow onto their own, uh, on their own luminosity. And the size of the sunspot is about the size of Earth. The sun has blemishes bigger than Earth. And so what my people, historically, have made discoveries that have dismantled the ego of the human species. No longer with us at the center, realizing how much bigger the sun is than us. We are in motion, just like other planets. And so this is humbling, yet enlightening, as a cosmic perspective. I think anything that can take the ego down a few notches can only be good for everyone else. Because big, untamed egos have never ended well in this world. So the light enter is... Uh, and you is, have a solar filter here? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. To protect the lens and the sensor. Mm -hmm. So there is uh, the optic ear, the lens, the sensor is here, and you just have to connect your smartphone uh, with Wi-Fi connection, and uh, the app will help you to observe an object. So you just have to choose something, uh, the telescope Vespera will point it. And That's the name of this, you, it's Vespera. Yeah, Vespera. Yeah. The company is Vionis and the telescope is Vespera. Well, well congratulations on this. Thank you. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's getting eerie. Do people notice that the twilight insects are kicking in? Oh yeah. So the insects, are they behaving strangely? No, they just think it's twilight. What's with these mosquitoes? Chuck. I didn't know what we were doing for the eclipse, so I bought them off of Amazon like the, a month and a half ago. Could you tell the mosquitoes it's just an eclipse and it's not nighttime actually yet? Yeah, exactly. So they can get the hell out of the backyard? Okay, tell them. <clears throat> Attention mosquitoes. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that. Look at that. Are you guys ready? And this is going to happen fast. Let's go. How high up can you put that? 120 meters. Let's do it. And that'll be high enough to see to the horizon above our tree line. And we might be able to see the exterior parts 
of the moon's umbra, where the atmosphere is still lit up by the sun. That'll be cool. You're gonna look that way, that way, and this way. But initially, I want you to look that way to see the eclipse shadow come, because it's gonna be coming more than a thousand miles an hour. And it'll be really dark that way on the horizon, okay? Send it up! Here, yes, yes, yes. Oh, okay. Get ready. I see Venus. Venus okay. is at five o'clock. Okay. Oh my oh. God. Wait, wait. Diamond ring. Oh my God. Whoa. No diamond ring. Ah. Whoa. Look at the horizon. Look at the horizon south of here. <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> that is, and the corona, <laughs> Venus comes out, other stars, and the horizon is lit. They are not in totality right now. See that little bright light at the bottom? Yeah. That's a that's a that's a, a an explosion on the sun. The total solar eclipse. Uh, there are coronal. Uh, uh, on the, on the, look at this. Yes, no. yes. You can see the ejections. Yes. On the, on the ejections oh, on the. Nice. Yes. Get some pictures of that. Yeah. Oh, crap. Yeah. 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 No, he's got it on the thing. It's spewing higher than the size of the moon, and appearing above the the, the shadow. Look at it now. Uh, get ready. Okay. Oh. Fantastic. Glasses on. Glasses on. Oh my God. Yay. Yay. We're applauding the universe for just being the universe. Oh my God. <laughs> but it's all about us. <laughs> it's, all, it's what happened for us. We are the center. We are the center. We There's about 20 minutes left on this great total solar eclipse of April 8th, 2024. I'm here in northern Vermont where we saw the whole thing through some thin cirrus clouds, but it didn't stop the majesty of the event. You know what I like about astronomical phenomena is there are people who have witnessed basically the same thing long before you did. And so in a way, I find myself communing through time with all those who came before me, who shared in this experience, but spread across millennia. Because things that happen in the universe, we're part of the universe. In fact, the universe is part of us. And so I was delighted and honored to share this total solar eclipse with close friends, new friends, the press, other media, social media, and if it helps bring the world a little closer together, because we're all participating in a single cosmic event, then maybe the universe, in the end, may be our greatest hope for peace and tranquility among all peoples. And that is a cosmic perspective.